Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your fact check by Ray Gapus, joining you for case number 26, Next Generation NPLEX RN study session. So before we get to start, I'd like to invite you to join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NPLEX RN application in review to 100 nurses from across the Philippines and to help us achieve this. Just watch and finish the ads in our videos and don't skip. In fact, this year we've increased the number of scholarship grants to 300. So we'd like to increase that somewhere to 500 for next year. So please do help us achieve our goal. And if you happen to share this video to at least 10 of your friends, we'll pray for your success. That's something we can assure you of. We also have our promo, get a free review from us if you process your NPLEX RN application with ITAPS GAPUS. And for this Christmas season, we are giving 50% discount on our NPLEX programs and other programs. Please do inquire and give us a call. We have our number there, 0906 for a chance to get a 50% discount. And that's only up to December 8, 2024. Let me make this public advisory too. Dr. Ray Gapos, that's me, and the mentors of the Ray Gapos Review System are not part of another review center named Gapos Review Academy. So if you want our high quality review programs, please do look for my full name. That's a Ray A. Gapos Review System. Now on to case number 26, but before that, okay, we're gonna talk about pressure injury, but let me first congratulate and share with you the success recipe of our recent passer. So these are Ray and the RAGRS mentors. I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to you. I've been with the Ray Gapo since 2016 and was honored to receive the Miss RAGRS Nursing Elite Award that year at De La Salle Medical and Health Sciences Institute. I hope you remember me. I'm planning to claim my second crown when I visit you. I successfully passed the PNL in 2019 with the help of Ray Gapo's team. And now in 2024, I passed the NPEX RN. Here's one aspect of the success story that I also like everybody to learn from. And she says, I must admit that I initially tried another review center, but it didn't work out. I failed. There are a lot of our passers who would usually do this thing. You have to learn to stick to where the program complements your mental ability. I think that's key, okay? And she says, it didn't work, and I failed on my first attempt. This experience reminded me to return to the Ray A. Gapus review system, and once again, you didn't disappoint. Of course, ours is always research-based. So newcomers or those who are just doing the review and test preparations program just for the money, that's not how we do it. When you come to the Ray Gapus review system, we give our best tools, our best mentors, and we treat you as part of our family, as our passers. Balancing life as a newly married woman, a new mom studying for exams, and preparing to move to the USA was no easy task. However, your clear explanations made all the difference. I completed two comprehensive courses, that's what she did, took the quick fix review, and even studied the NPEX T11 book just two days before my exam. The key to success is to study, believe in yourself, and surrender everything to the Lord. Thank you so much for everything. Mabuhay to the RAGRS team, and may God bless you and your entire team. And she says, I've always found comfort in this verse. At the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen. So congratulations, Beth Nicole K. Briel Oloteo, USRN, from De La Salle Health and Medical Sciences Institute, who passed the Illinois Board of Nursing and GNTS. Our heartfelt congratulations from my team, the academics, and the research team of the Ray Gapo system. Okay, so now let's move on and let's pay particular attention to um, what we're supposed to talk about today. So once again, congratulations to Bev Nicole Cabriel Oloteo, who passed the test last November 16, 2024. Okay, so we're going to talk about pressure injury. Now, first, when do we say that there's a pressure injury? Well, a pressure injury is present when the skin is injured and the skin is usually over a bony prominence. This results from a combination of risk factors such as 
share or friction, which is common among the elderly because of their wrinkled skin, pressure, and immobility. So those who are immobilized for long periods of time, those who are in traction, or those who are having um, raised for falls, and those who are usually immobilized because they're unconscious, they're usually at risk, okay? So pressure injury affects, remember, the, the different body parts. Here's an acronym, BEAT, buttocks and back, heels and hips, elbows, ankles, and definitely the tailbone or the sacral area. But let me highlight this thing. You don't take this as gospel truth for every single patient that you get to see. You have to focus on how the patient is positioned on bed before you decide which body part is usually most at risk. Like for example, if the patient's lying flat, definitely the bony prominences when the client's lay, lying flat on bed could be the tailbone, okay? And for example, if the client is side lying, there's a specific body part that could be more at risk for pressure injury than other body parts. So what I'm trying to say is, look at the totality of the case that's being presented to you before you make a judgment on which body part is usually most at risk. Now, pressure injury is also manifested by, here's an acrostic for this specific part of this concept and the acrostic or the mnemonic or the code is CHAPS, meaning changes in skin color. So you have non-blanchable erythema. So it doesn't change in color even if you press it. Hot skin or warm skin or areas that are sometimes cooler because of poor circulation and sometimes warmer because of inflammation and then a drainage that's pus-like could actually be a red flag for pressure injury and of course, swelling on a bony prominence. Now, stage one pressure injury is characterized as red and painful skin without any break. So you would notice in stage one pressure injury, there's no opening on the skin. There are no tears that the, uh, or the patient may not have an open wound. So which simply means the main symptom that you will note here could be the presence of pain plus objectively speaking, non-blanchable redness or erythema of the skin. So that's stage one. For stage two pressure injury, there could now be either a blister or a shallow open ulcer with reddish or pinkish borders. However, you would also note that stage two pressure injury could have a variant. The blister could either be intact or ruptured. So for as long as you get to see that there's a blister, think of it as stage two. Now stage three pressure injury, you now have an open ulcer that affects the subcutaneous tissues or fat layers and this time around, you have a tunneling. That's where the pus would usually pass from one part of the wound to the other part. So that's a landmark manifestation. So for stage three, pay particular attention to the tunneling plus the affectation of subcutaneous tissues or fat layers. And for stage four, you have deep ulcer with a reddish crater now affecting the muscles including the ligaments, and sometimes could be exposing the bones. So if it already is so deep and it exposes the bones, then that's a stage four. Now, there's such a thing as unstageable pressure injury, in which case the base of the wound is not seen from the top. It's difficult to see it from the top. Why? It's usually covered with a layer of dead tissue, and that layer of dead tissue could either be yellowish, grayish, greenish, brownish, or even black. So when this occurs, that you have a um, combination or mixture of colors from one area to the other areas of the wound, then it's called unstageable pressure injury. Now, how is pressure injury treated? Remember, A, first, Antibiotics to prevent secondary infection. Remember, the skin is the first line of defense of the body. So the moment that it gets violated or injured or opened, 
then it's easy for bacteria to enter the body system. Then you have your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agent to decrease pain and of course your pain reliever. Second, um, it's usually irrigated with saline and of course the use of mild soap is allowed. Examples of brands of mild soap could be your Dove soap, your Dial, your um, Cetaphil bar. Although it's not considered a soap, it's a non-soap cleansing agent, but it could be used to wash and moisturize that area, okay? And then, of course, debridement and dressing. For stage one and stage two pressure injury, usually it's a hydrocolloid film that's used. For stage three and stage four, it's usually a hydrocolloid foam that is used. Now, before we proceed to our case study in which we're going to apply what we just learned, I asked a passer which book helped you the most. Her name is Cass, and she answered NCLEX 311 is the best. And I asked why. This is what she says in Tagalog. Halos same na same po siya sa pagkakakonstruct sa mga na-encounter ko pong mga standalone questions. So it, the, the, the formatting of the question looks like the same in terms of how it was presented in her test, okay? So it's not me who's saying that. So get a copy of NPLEX 311, the NGN edition. Okay. So let's discuss case number 26, a 71-year-old client. We have here an elderly. Of course, the skin is wrinkled. So by shearing force, they could get raised to pressure injury, is admitted with full thickness skin loss, extending to the subcutaneous tissues. Pay particular attention to that phrase. The subcutaneous tissues are affected with tunneling. Purulent discharge, redness, warmth, and swelling. The nurse caring for the client should implement interventions related to which stage of pressure injury. Remember what we said a while back? If the skin is intact, then that could be stage one, unblanchable uh, hyperemia. When there's blistering, that could be stage two. When there's tunneling, that could be stage three. When there's bone exposure, there could be stage four. And when the wound is covered with different colors like black, brown, yellow, gray, greenish, um, covering, it could be related to unstageable pressure injury. So in this case, pay particular attention to your specific description here that says tunneling. So that would tell you that this is associated with stage three pressure injury. Okay. So I'd like to invite you to join our hundreds of thousands and thousands of thousands from more than 30 countries. We're now on our 36th country. Okay, we're hosting healthcare workers from 36 countries to our system, including a 60-year-old who passed the NGN at age 60, and all of this from those countries. So here at the Ray Gapo system, our tools are published by world-renowned publishers, and we have our own learning management system that are provided to you for free if you get into our full package. And of course, our environment for learning is very conducive as we maintain comfortable number of students. Plus, we have our own NGN simulation room here at the Ray Yapos building in Manila. So may I invite you to join us for the next generation NPLEX RM Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NPLEX RM. Our fee starts at 3,499. Your choice of live face-to-face -face lectures, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons. QBank and three books plus my NGN strategies. Okay. So once again, this is your mentor, your fat check buddy Ray Gapo saying thank you. And please don't forget to subscribe. You can share the link of this video and some of the other useful videos that you've found in our channel. And please repeat watching them and don't skip the videos for the sake of our brothers and sisters who would want to avail of our scholarship grants. Thank you and see you in our next video.